I'm Howard Reynolds, and uh, let's see. We have uh, we don't have Jack this morning. That's going to what, be a real. What? There you are. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning to the great state of Texas. Good morning to the great country, the United States of America, los Estados Unidos de América. And good morning to every nook and cranny that this 100-watt transmitter makes it in. For those who are still using FM radios in the interland, good morning to the entire world. As you know, we're listened to everywhere. Folks, we're going to have a great program today. We have a special, special interview to play for you from a long-time person. But before we get there, before we get there, we got to go to that studio with El Senor Howard. Yeah, I'm flying the plane by myself this morning. My trusty friend Jack had some, uh, well, he had some dental work done. And you know how that can go. He just, yes. he called me at 420 this morning. He said, oh, I said, this is, the phone says it's you, Jack. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> he says, that, that, tooth, that tooth thing didn't go too well yesterday. And my mouth is really sore. And you know you you got to have a good mouth to speak on the radio or the phone. I know. So, we are jackless well, today. We're hey, that's funny. We're jackless today. That's funny. Hey, but look, I hey already, brother, are you missing? <laughs> I know, but brother Jack, you are missed. But you know what, man? If you want to mumble, if you want to call in and mumble your word of the day, you can always call in and mumble your word of the day because you know. You always give me that kick and start. You know, you always give me something to ping pong after. And I, well, I wouldn't even say slingshot to, to I, I mean, I wouldn't say ping pong. I want to say slingshot off of, you know, it's like, you oh, know, yeah. what we do to get into orbit. You know, to get into orbit, you have to, uh, for, I mean, get into orbit of the moon. You first have to get to the escape velocity of the earth, and then you can allow the moon to capture you. That's what you do to this show, Brother Jack. You give us that slingshot mobility. Anyway, welcome Steve M. TGIF Egberto, Steve M. says in the chat. So what's going on, Senor Howard, now that you're flying the plane solo? Do you remember how to do it, man? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I may have to call my my co-captain Jack and say, "Uh, Jack, how do you do this? (laughs) I doubt that, but I I mean, I doubt that (laughs) very, 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 very much. I mean. After all, don't forget you built that whole damn thing. So nah. Hey folks, well, that that's we we, we we only tell the truth here, man. So mm-hmm. I, I have to expose my brother at the end of the other end of the studio. He just get a little nice white lie, you know what I mean? But hey, what can I say? But oh, folks well, no. <laughs> hey, one one thing we're gonna take care of here really quickly is our yes. station I think it's KPFT Houston. I forgot to put it in. I think that's what threw everybody off. Is like, uh, well, there's Egberto's theme, but where was the station ID? So there yeah. was a station KPFT Houston. And we got something really special coming up again today. This is gonna be a whole lot of fun. I want everyone to come out to the Mucky Duck between three and six. We've got Susan Darrow doing her show live today. Right there at the Mucky Duck. So the duck will be full. I mean, there's going to be people lined up for blocks just to get in to see this uh, spectacle of radio that's going to happen this afternoon. I love so, that. From three to six. From three to six, folks. And, you know, who has that the smoothest voice, that that common, oh, yeah. that common voice from Sue and Susan Dar? Who has that, you know, who just, you know, mellow things out? get to see her in person folks at the mucky duck mm-hmm. come on out and enjoy the uh the ambiance we're gonna have a lot of fun there's a band that she knows it's gonna be playing out there we'll be doing sound checks and possibly have a live band on the radio by remote which is really uh hasn't happened at kpft in a very long time so yeah. come on out and enjoy history come out and enjoy susan's company i'll be out there holding the 10 cans of string in the little TV, a little radio antenna up, and I think they were going to be just fine. And I'm, are they going to? Are they going to give you a? Um, are they going to give you a um, a direct feed, or are you going to sort of mic it up? No, we're going to do we're going to direct feed from uh, wow. the, the stage. So I, I brought like a five hundred foot long cable in case we oh. need all of it. 
Well, so nice. it's gonna, it's going to be a very interesting uh, show today. Uh, the ten cans and string should hold up. I've got my good friend back here and, and intern Basil. He'll be playing all the music at the studio, and and uh, Susan will be the live announcer from on location. The Mucky Duck today for between three and five. Come on out and see us. In case you need the address, it's twenty four twenty five Norfolk Street. Very easy to find. What's it again? Uh, 2425 Norfolk. It's right off of Kirby. Yeah. So it's a very easy to find place. Uh, if I can find it, anybody can find it. So I was over there just the other day doing a site survey to see what I, what I needed to do to make the broadcast happen. And, uh, it's going to be another one of those radio magic uh, moments where we will be with you having a good time. And not to worry, folks, you do get there. There's there are places on the street and even the, on the side of the Monkey Duck the Park. So you should be cool. So check it out. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain is in the chat with us right now. Anything else, Howard, before we get started, my brother? That's it. Folks, we are going to have a great show for you today. Title of the show is The Congressional Progressives Agenda is Out. And the, the star of the show today, former Tea Party representative Joe Walsh, comes clean. Now, let me tell you, um, I have been watching Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh is this congressman from Chicago, was a big-time Tea Partier and used to give Obama hell, was on TV, really giving him hell on and on. And, I mean, he was a character. And I saw him on MSNBC, and he pretty much... Uh, you know, change his skin. And I'm like, oh man, we got to talk to this guy. So I, I called him up and, you know, we went ahead and uh, arranged an interview that I did a few days, about two or three days ago. And I want to play that for you today because it one of the things that it shows, something that we talk about uh, all of the times, uh, we can all change and we can all start voting in our interests, supporting what our interests says. We can all change our skins. You know, I've spoken about the things that yours truly have changed that needed to be changed. So never give up on hope. Uh, well, I don't, I, I don't like to work hope. Never give up on the possibility that we can change. So what I want to do is just go ahead and get started right away with that interview, and then we'll start taking calls. Telephone number, remember, is 281, ah, hear me, 281. You know, when you have two different numbers, you got to remember which, which version of the show you're doing. This is a KPFT version of the show. It is 713-526-5738. Again, that is 713-526-5738. Without further ado, let's go ahead and listen to Joe Walsh. Welcome to another edition of Politics Run. I'm Big Amic Berto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being with us one more time. Today, we are honored to have former Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois and now host of White Flag with Joe Walsh. Joe, how are you doing this morning? Berto, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me on. Well, you know, in, in the past, uh, well, the truth of the matter is I would always have had you on, even though we are at the polar ends of the, the spectrum with regards to uh, political ideology, philosophy, et cetera. But the one thing I respect is a strong intellectual conversation on our beliefs, et cetera. If we're honest, we're in a country where we yeah. should all live together and get along. And on my program, I bring folks from all over. And we actually enjoy each other. So in that light, I want to say, first of all, thank you for appearing on Politics Then Right. And secondly, how are you doing? Uh, I'm tired. Um, look, it's, it's great to be with you. And I love what you're doing because America needs to do this. We're so, I'll watch my language, we're so damn divided. We don't talk across the divide. I used to be a really divisive political guy. I'm trying to make up for that. So it's been a wild journey. But yeah, I, look, my friend, I'm I'm tired because right now I wake up every day and I do all I can to make sure Donald Trump is not ever back in the White House. 
You know, what I, what I find interesting in what you said, you know, in that, you know, we all live in the same country. We all have to eventually land the same place. What I like to say is we have to give people a place to land. There are some people that are so committed to what they're doing, even when they realize that they need to change, that they don't have a place to land. So they stay in that comfort zone. Yeah. One of the reasons I have a lot of respects for people like you and from from people from all spectrums that make a change when they see a change is necessary is that it takes a hell of a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage. So I want to ask you, when you made that change to say, look, to hell with parties, I am looking out for America. Tell me what was that like, the response that you got on the right side of the aisle, because you were a big tea party guy, man. Yeah, no, look, it, uh, it was really scary when I almost six years ago now came out and said, I oppose Donald Trump. When I publicly said that I knew that I was taking a blowtorch to my career. I knew that I was ending my career as a Republican. I knew I could never get elected again as a Republican. I knew I was going to take a big financial hit, and I knew that I would get threats and hate every day and every week. Uh, so on at one level, that's a really tough thing to do, right? Which is why my former colleagues in Congress and in the conservative media world that I come from haven't done that. It's hard to throw it all away. But in a way, and you'll get this, it was a really easy decision because I couldn't live with myself if, if I didn't do that. That is so true. I want to read you something that you wrote, because uh -oh. I think, well, actually, it's great. I think, uh, I think this is what's so important. I, and, and let me just tell the audience, first of all, I don't agree with everything the brother said. Yeah. But I tell you what, I respect the way he said it and what he said. And it goes as follows. I'm going to try to be quick with it. It said, President Donald Trump and I agree on big issues. We both believe strongly that illegal immigration threatens our national security and strains our government. He made building a wall on the southern border a focus of his 2016 national campaign. I was for a border wall before that election. He pledged to help unemployed workers in dilapidated manufacturing towns get back onto their feet. The very poor people who live in my backyard in places such as Gary, Indiana, Decatur, Illinois, and who called into my show to talk about an America that wasn't a great for them as it used to be. Trump complained about a political system that was out of touch with our ordinary folks and the promise to get rid of fancy assholes who ran it. That was all great. It was part of a reason that I voted for him for disruption, but that vote wasn't worth it if it means having a president who lies, bullies, abuses his power, places his vanity above the public interest, runs his administration like a cult, manipulates the laws of his personal benefit, befriends dictators while disavowing his own intelligence community and fails in so many other ways, having nothing to do with being a member of one political party or another, to be a responsible steward of his office. Whether we intended or are not, this package of a little good and a ton of bad is what I what I and nearly 63 million other Americans voted into office. I believe now that this support was misplaced. I want to explain to those 63 million why. I don't believe I can do it by behaving like Trump, and I wouldn't want to either by name calling, mischaracterizing, exaggerating, and printing pe and pitting people against each other. After all. If I truly believe that Donald Trump is a con man, and I do, then I myself was conned. I have to own that. But by owning it, I hope to lead others to the same realizations, not by making them feel guilty about a politician they backed, but by helping them understand the reality of who that politician is, what he's done, and what history suggests he'll continue to do. That was in your book title. F silence, <laughs> F silence, calling Trump out uh, for the cultish, moronic, authoritarian that he is. I mean, I that that is in the beginning of your book and summarized everything. Well, you, you, I, I, by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for reading that because I haven't heard those words for a while. And, and what jumped out at me is this: 
I was a disruptive politician. I went to Washington in 2010 because, look, and I still feel this way, I think our politics is broken. I'm sick of both parties. I think we need major reform. I don't think politicians listen to average white, black, and brown folk out there. I still believe all of that. So like I supported Trump in 16 because I wanted disruption. And Trump's voters were my voters. So they wanted the same thing. I was guilty, though, for not paying attention to what a bad, evil, horrible person he is. There are good disruptors and bad disruptors. He was a bad disruptor. I made a mistake voting for him. And I'm trying to spend the rest of my life making up for that. But but I, I understood why people were gravitating toward him. And because I come from that world, and I still engage with Trump supporters every day, I will never demean them. And I'll always help them uh, try to get out of the cult like I got out of the cult. You know, today, I, 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 it's great that you said the word cult, right? Today on my morning show, six o'clock at KPFT 90.1 FM, uh, one of the callers called me out for calling all Trump supporters a cult. And I back, I, 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 I stepped back a while and I said, no, uh, not all Trump supporters are, are uh, cult are cult members. I mean, the truth of the matter is I am not a fan of Joe Biden, but I will be voting for Joe Biden because of what I think policies are that I can get, when I say I am talking about, we can get under that domain. And I, t I told my audience that several times. And one came back and said, well, Egberto, we could say the same thing. We know Trump is a bad guy. We don't like Trump either, but we want to vote for Trump because of some of the underlying policies that we like that we can get under him. So I had to step back and say, Wait a minute. I gave I opened that door for him to say, even as I don't like this candidate, I still support what on underneath. I after in reading your piece and 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 some of what you said, I think you have neutralized that argument by saying, but there is a there's I, I know it inside, but coming from you, I think it's more effective because you can say, I've been there. I know the kinds of policies that Trump supports, that I also support, but as your statement said, it's not worth it. Go ahead, please. No, and, and, and you're right. Look, because I come from Trump world, they're not all cult members, but many of them are, and I'll tell them they are. And you're a cult member if, like, if you can say to yourself, and some Trump supporters say this to me, Joe, I know he's a bad guy and I know he lies all the time, but the Democrats are evil and he's going after them, blah, blah, blah. I disagree with that, but I, I understand that guy's making a rational decision. But when a Trump supporter can't acknowledge to me that he's a bad man, that means he's a cult member. Right. Like when, when, I, when I did the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life, when I ran for president against Trump. <laughs> Egberto, I, I was in Iowa at a Trump rally, and there were people going in line in Des Moines, Iowa to go into the rally. And I asked 40 people in line that day in Iowa, has Donald Trump ever told a lie? And all 40 of them told me Trump has never lied. Now, if you're a Trump supporter and you tell me Trump has never lied, that, then that's, that's cultish behavior. Yeah, it, it is amazing. Uh, there, there are a lot of look. I mean, on all sides, people have a tendency to like the person that they're supporting and they 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 sort of deify more so than necessary the person. But there's a special there's a special thing with this person. Now, if you're going to uh, if if you're going to speak to the audience at large, what are the specific reasons that you would give that makes Trump a clear and present danger if he were to become president of the United States again. Trump doesn't believe in democracy and he believes he's above the law. End of story. Uh, those, those two things are anathema to America. Um, he would like to be a dictator. He would try. 
that is a direct threat to this country. Um, he truly does believe the law does not apply to him. Again, a king, a dictator. Uh, we don't have that here. And I, I need to continually remind people in the wonderful history of this country, we've only had one sitting president who lost an election and refused to concede, refused to do that one beautiful American thing, participate in the peaceful transfer of power. And then Trump went even one step further. He did whatever he could to try to overthrow that election. There, there's no greater threat to our democracy than that. Now, uh, unfortunately, we, we, we tend to consider ourselves the bastion of democracy. How does uh, the rest of what does that do to the, the rest of the world? Those people who we're telling them that they should follow our lead, the democratic lead. How does that come across to the rest of the world? We're the, we're the world's oldest democracy. And I, I, I think the rest of the world right now is worried about us. Look, I, I, I understand it. And Egberto, I know you do too. Um, Trump supporters want a certain kind of America back. This is what they tell me. They've given up on democracy, like they no longer believe the democratic process can get them their America back. So they're perfectly willing to say, and they've said this to me, Joe, I don't care if Trump's a dictator, he's going to get me back. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, let me, stop, let me stop you there, uh, Joe. What is that kind of America? Articulate that for me. I mean, I think that's important yeah. for everybody to hear. That kind of America is. Uh, like a 1954 America where men married women, women married men. There were two genders. You could say Merry Christmas. The plant that you worked at was right there in your town. America was a whiter country. We, we were a more Christian country. You know, kind of a longing for that kind of America back. Again, I don't demean these folks. There's a lot. They, they want that back. But I, 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 I go after them because they've abandoned democracy to get that back. Do you think there is some way we can get to folks to tell them they can have that America they, ha they want in a microcosm? Nobody's stopping them from associating with whomever they want to associate it with. Are doing whatever they want to do. If they want to isolate themselves in that type of America, shouldn't we be able to explain to them that you can? If you want to live in that America, you can. You can create a free country. Allows you to create whatever sphere you want to create. Isn't that right? And can are they open to hear that? Uh, yeah, no, yes, but it, it okay. all depends. It, Alberto, it all depends on who the messenger is. Like. These folks aren't going to listen to anybody on CNN or MSNBC, and I go on those networks all the time. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to listen to Democrats. They're not going to listen to Joe Biden. Um, they'll listen to people like me. It's got to be people from their own side who say this to them. Look, you don't have to embrace men marrying men or women marrying women, but you have to, in a free society, you have to accept that there are differences and that other people believe it's okay that men can marry men and women can marry women. And it's the law of the land. With You have to be tolerant. We need messengers on their side who can tell them you've got to be tolerant of other views. You don't have to embrace them, but you've got to be tolerant of them. And the other thing we need to, I need to teach these folks is immigration is good. We want people to come here, white, black, and brown. I don't give a damn what color you are if you want to become an American. I, I think we need to go head after that issue with these folks. Well, you know, I, one of the reasons I wanted you on, and because, like I said, I bring audiences from, from every spectrum, uh, and I think you can reach people that I have a very hard time reaching to because of several factors, both the way I look and also the policy that yeah. I support. But uh, again, uh, I, I think when folks like yourself, myself and others who have a platform can show that 
we can talk to each other civilly, whether we agree on 80%. And, 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 and this is what's interesting, Joe. I go you ahead and agree on more than you think. I that's that's my point, right? I sit down in a Starbucks. I live in a very red area. My and yeah. I'm in Houston, but the part of Houston I chose to live is a very red, a very white area. All right, okay, and it had a lot to do with the school for my daughter. And um when I go into a Starbucks, all the people that come in there are Trump supporters or whatever, and we have a great time. Not only that. They're, they're agreeing with the things that we talk about, 90% of the things we're talking about. So if my car is parked out there, I can guarantee you a whole lot of Trumpsters are coming in there just to shoot the bull with me. And they have fun. We have to establish that. I mean, I'm doing it on an individual basis and a, and a, and a host basis. You are doing it in the way we have to try to establish it. And I think another good example is to show folks that, again, a Joe Walsh and an Egberto can actually sit down and say, hey, we are not, look, we have more in common than you believe, but also we can have differences and not really. Uh... Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. So right now, politically, we're at each other's throats in this country. We are dangerously divided. I come from two worlds where we're incentivized to divide people. In mm -hmm. politics, the more extreme you are, the better your chances of getting elected. I was a right wing radio media guy. The more extreme you are, the better your ratings. So we incentivize division. But I'll tell you, Egberto, like I, I'm, I'm going to travel the country and and I think we need to ask Americans head on the question. Do you want to stay together as one country, one people? Now, I think most Americans would say yes. I think there'd be a lot of Americans that would say, screw it, Joe, let's just break up. But if we want to stay together as one people, then I think it's up to us, the people, to do certain things that we've stopped doing. I agree so wholeheartedly. And, and I do think most people want to stick together. They just don't know how to. Yes. And, and, and I, think, I think with having good leadership, having people that are really uh, engaged in doing this, I think that's the answer. That's what I dedicated my life to. And I noticed that uh, that's sure as hell what you've uh, dedicated your life wow, to. Wow, wow. But only, Alberto, you, thank you for what you do. I was a bad guy politically. So this is my penance. I'm doing this because this is my penance. I was a bad guy. Uh, so I'm trying to make up for that. So I'm, you know, I'm happy to be joining you. Yeah, but let, let, let me tell you something, Joe. Uh, like I always say in the things that I do, we have to have a place for everybody to land. Amen. Everybody, and myself, yourself, everybody, we have to have a place to land. So anyway, uh, I always end my discussion this way, Joe. What would you have liked me to ask you that I didn't? If I wasn't doing this, what would I be doing? Tell me. I'd be on a piece of land, about 100 acres, with not another human being in sight, I'd be living with 20 dogs, a bunch of, a bunch of tequila, and I'd be, I'd spend the rest of my life just reading books and relaxing with my dogs. I can't top that, man. I can't top that. Folks, we've been with former Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois, now the host of White Flag with Joe Walsh. And folks, uh, the book is uh, from the previous cycle, but I think Everybody needs to go out and, and pick up a copy. By the way, first of all, we weren't on today for the book. In my research, I found the book. Okay. And when I read that passage, yeah. I said, wow, I think this is something folks need to read. F silence, calling Thank Trump you. out. Okay, check it out. I'll have it in the, in the blog post and along this. Thank you so kindly, Joe, for having been on Politics and Right. Egberto, thank you. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go directly to the phones and start with Spike. Come on in, Spike. You're Good morning. On, Spike. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Talk to me, my brother. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I be hearing some people tell me that, you know, that this, the people are a cult and stuff. You see... That's exactly what they want you to say. But what they don't realize is it's the Republican Party 
See, the Republican Party is not the party that we knew decades back. You know, they are a cult. They they have put people in positions in the Republican Party to bring about the cult, this cult that they got going on. You know, that's why if, if they say the, uh, some of the old ones say they're going to do this and do that, and then Trump come along and say, no, don't do that. Wait till, wait till I get in office. Then, you know, and then they back up, you know, and, and just like uh, uh, Bill Barr, you know, he talked all that jive when he, when he was leaving, but now he coming back. He, he, he said he going to support Trump if, you know, uh, uh, he going to vote for him anyway. See, we don't realize uh, how this, how the, how the countries want run and how the world is run. See, you got the, the Skull and Bone, the Carlisle Group, the, the Bilderbergers, you know, all these are, 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 are groups that, 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 that they, here they run this country. But you got them all in, all in other countries. And, and one thing about this, man, you, you do the research, man, you'll see mostly, I say 99.99% of, of the people that's in positions around the world, <laughs> they all went to the, a lot of them went to the same schools, you know. Spike, let me, let, let me just tell you, first of all, uh, that is, I mean, believe it or not, for some of what you said, that is why I wanted a guy like Joe on. Joe uh, comes across like your your average dude. Joe was deep in the movement, and Joe made a decision that he, Bill Barr, uh, Sununu, all these guys that came out like Joe and, and pointed out the kind of character that Trump was, and you know they're right back into the fold. And Joe has paid the price, like he said, financially. He'll never be able to run in politics again. Uh, I mean, all, all these different things. And like I said, we have to give people, those who are willing to, uh, for country, for, for their own morality, to say, you know what? I, I, I can't live this way. I am man enough. I'm woman enough to say, I was wrong. I got conned, and now I'm going to atone for what I what I did, people that I misled, and I'm going to do the work necessary. Because when you talk about the Carlisle Group and all these things, Spike, you're absolutely right. But you know what? As long as we still have one person, one vote, and now I'm on Howard's song, as long as we uh, we still have one person, one vote— we can make the changes that we want. Yes, they'll try to fight it. They'll try to indoctrinate others, but we can make that change. Spike, my phone lines are filling up. Wanted to give you a chance to say your piece. Thank you so kindly for listening. Uh, give me a quick closer so I can jump to Johnny. Hey, look, hey, look here. When Donald Trump had that show, Apprentice, I'm going to tell you. See, we was looking at it as entertainment. He used they used that show to build him up so he'll know. See, he was elected to be selected. They built him up so he'll know how to handle. Wait, 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 wait! I want to flip like, what you just I, said. You I, said he was a. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I want to switch something you said, my brother. You said he was elected so he'd be selected. No, I said he was selected to be elected. I flipped the words on you. Be elected. Yes, thank you, brother. I gotta I, go, I, 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 Spike. Yeah. Sky, Yo, I got to right go. On, man. Right Thank you, brother. Peace. Brother Johnny, mayor of politics and right. Come on in. Trust, I trust you can hear me okay, Egberto. Yes, sir. Uh, your guest, Joe Walsh, on your show this morning, he made an excellent case. He pointed out, I think, successfully, the irony of when voters that he talked to, every one of those voters said that Donald Trump doesn't lie. And that the reason why they're supporting him, even though they know, they may know and realize, but they accept the fact that he does not represent the democratic process, that he wants to rule as an autocrat, basically, that they're okay with that. And why? Because they're so tired of how uh, the democratic process has been subverted. And the supreme irony that Joe Walsh 
has successfully pointed out, I hope, to the listeners, I hope they heard that before the KTFT over the air signal uh, went out, is that it's their party, their people, their tribe under Donald Trump and other Republicans prior to Donald Trump in the White House who have worked to subvert the process. Of course, the centrist Democrats didn't help. I mean, they didn't challenge. That's true. But let's be real here. It's their party who represents anti-democracy. But they say they're tired of people subverting the, the democratic process. It's, so, uh, it's such irony. Well, you know, Joe, uh, uh, Joe, Joe made a lot of great points. And uh, like I said, one of the reasons I wanted to have him on, because he's one person who can connect with those who are willing uh, to listen. And I think, yes, I think he did a very good job. And I like the guy. I'll probably work with him on, uh, on, a, few, on a few things during this cycle because, again, like I said, uh, you know, he put country first. He put, he put morality before his, his own personal economy. You know, I, I, I have to respect that. And again, you know, I bring in folks from all sides. So you know how we, we do here. But anyway, Johnny, I got it. The lines are filling up and I got to move on. Anything else real quick? One suggestion real quick. I would like for your guest, Joe Walsh, to join forces with uh, Neil Aquino at some point. Maybe help him every once in a while. That would be a good uh, resource, a good ally, a good joining of uh, Batman and Robin. You're Please. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Brother Johnny. You have a good one, Mayor. All right. Let's go to Donald. Come on in, Brother Donald. Hey, good morning, Alberto. Let me ask you a personal question. Do you have yes. any red shoes? If I have any who? Red, red shoes. No, I don't have any red shoes. Well, that stereotype is gone, but okay. What we're going to do is you're going to dress up in red, and you're going to borrow old Joe's Make America Great hat again. You're going to put that on. I'm going to dress up in, you know, cowboy boots, everything else, put on my blue shirt and my blue hat that says <laughs> Mama and Joe. And we're going to go out. We can go to Bordersville. We can go to Haverstock, North Lake Manor, uh, Acres Home, Sunnyside, Gardner De or Denver Gardner, whatever it is over there, Cashmere Garden, wherever you want to go. And we're going to split script. I'm going to take your script, you're going to take mine, and we're going to read them to the people and ask them if they're going to vote. But we're going to go together so we can show that we can actually get along so that we can convince people that you can get along and you have to reach across the aisle to get things done and find out who's not doing what for who. You know, I knew... I knew that's where you were going. I knew exactly where you were going. And you know what? Believe it or not, uh, Brother Donald, I would, I would do that to make the point. Because I think, uh, uh, you know, I've been saying uh, this for quite a long time. In fact, I was a board member of the Coffee Party, which that is what we attempted. To, well, that's what not, not we attempted to do. That's what we were doing. And there are a lot of organizations out there that are doing similar work. Uh, there is... Uh, uh, living room conversations and there there's uh, across the table and many others you know so i mean uh, we have to we have to use the methods that that we that we can work with because the truth of the matter donald right is if you and i are at each other's throats we are not handling those who are really causing us harm and that's why I have I love talking to guys like you uh, on the other side of the aisle because we can show that hey we like each other man we we love each other man what can I say you know what I mean but anyway anything else Donald before hey, we move on and for for Johnny my my Ronald McDonald shoes the big red ones yeah I don't think you fit they just too big <laughs> all right brother you have a good one okay. Thank you, DJ. Have a good weekend. Bye. You too, brother. Peace. Let's go to brother Harry. Come on in, Harry. How are you doing this morning, sir? Buenos dias, El Professor Alberto Willis. Buenos I dias, mi hermano. Oh, uh, muy bien. Most thanks. Um, I agree 100% of what Joe Walsh said. I'm glad he did a complete 360 turnaround and uh, realized that he was under Trump derangement syndrome. Harry, and, uh, Harry can I interrupt you for a second? Because 
There's one well, thing I want to correct. I want to correct, right? Joe Walsh and Egberto Willis do not agree on everything. Joe Walsh is a conservative. Okay, let me just make that clear. Right. Joe Walsh okay. is a conservative. Interesting, when we sit and talk, we have more than 80% of stuff in common. And I think folks have to get that. Uh, you know, we, we, we have allowed ourselves to be split a lot deeper than we are. But when it comes to ide ideology, yeah, he's conservative. I'm very, very liberal. But man, we have a lot in common. Go ahead. Continue, Brother Harry. But at least he's, uh, even though he's conservative, at least he believes that diversity, equity, and inclusion has a place at the table. Uh, right. yeah, you, our caller, our caller Spike, caller Derek, caller Augie, yourself, Iberto, and myself, we are people of color. And um, th those Trump supporters are talking about, when he, like Joe Walsh was saying, he wanted a whiter, uh, th those people want to get back to a whiter America. Well, you know, then that means uh, th those people that I just named, including yourself, Iberto, then we can't be a uh, and, 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 and we can't be equally and be accepted and be able to live our lives just because of the pigmentation, the melanin, all that stuff. Uh, you know that makes us different, and it's just we have to. Um, you know, it's just people who don't look like us just have to accept the fact that there are people out there who don't look like them and that we have a right to exist in this country uh, as well as people who don't look like us who are melanin deficient. You know, so, and that's, you know that's, just, that's just the way I, it, it is. I hear you, Harry. I hear you. I, I, I want to I expand on something that you said because I think it is, it is very important, and that is um, – what you know, back in the early days when I just came to this country, and you know, I, I'd everybody around the world learned the, the the American history, and I always know about Malcolm X as well as as uh, right. Martin Luther King, and uh, some people were shocked when they realized that I had more of an affinity for Malcolm X, and and that is uh, because I understood Malcolm X, uh, not from how most Americans understood Malcolm X but understood the things that he was saying. And everything that he says sort of played out right now, right? When you talk about it, they don't accept us. They don't, they, you know, if we follow uh, MAGA, people like us, doesn't matter, whatever. It's not yeah. their, it's not their right to determine what to, what's accepted or not. And one of the things, one of the differences between Malcolm X and, and, and Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X said, it wasn't for you to give me my freedom. It was for me to, to take my freedom, to live my freedom, to, uh, to not relegate my freedom to somebody else. And that is a belief I have for everybody, whether you be a woman, whether you be a, a, a gay person or whatever. It's not the right of anybody else to give them agency in life. It is for them to assert right. it and take it. Hey, my phones are filling up, Harry. Thank you for calling. I got to let you go here. Can I, say, can I say one more thing? Um, Real quick, yeah, ten Ray, seconds. Yeah, caller Ray, and then you, your other, uh, as uh, Johnny said about Neil Aquino, um, yes. the other guest you have on, Daniel Cohen. I would yes. like Joe Walsh to be with him, and you're absolutely right about Malcolm X. That you know, as he did that, and then when they did that piece, um, uh, who killed Malcolm X? He talks right. about that at the end of that documentary. You we'll talk, Harry. Got you, brother. Got to go. Got to go. Let me go to uh, Howard. And then to Joe, come on in. Uh, just, go ahead, just go ahead and take the callers. We'll wrap it up later. Okay. Uh, come on in, Joe. Hey, Egberto. Good morning, Brother you, Joe. Sir. Good morning, sir. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing all right, man. I'm on the road again. Um, and I was listening, I think, uh, this, earlier this week, Tuesday, and I was going to call, but I said, nah. And I'm glad I didn't because the other, uh, that guy called uh, and basically called you out for, um, you know, um, the cult, Trump the cult syndrome, and the you know that was great. Yeah, yeah. I, Can I, I stop I you there, Joe? Can I stop you there? I think I think uh, when he called, I think he was a truck driver. I think we left on very good terms, and I think he was supposed to call back in today, but we'll see. Go ahead, Joe. Continue. 
So I hope he does call back. Um, so, but you know, this this show is a, is a lousy format to address big issues like we have, right? But just suffice it to say, real quick, that um, that you know, it it it, it, it there's a presidential election coming up. I've never seen somebody to vote for in a presidential election, right? I've only I've only voted against the the other guy, right? And like you, you know, I, I was I, I mean I grew up punk rock in the '80s here in Houston, right? I'm as I'm as liberal as you can get until suddenly, and now I'm conservative, right? And I, my views haven't really changed. Um, but but listen, go go check out this guy John Stockwell. He went to UT. He's got a Plan Two degree. He was um, he was a Marine, and then he was a CIA operative for about uh, 15 years, and then he and then he quit the CIA and he came clean about a lot of things and he got a lot of things off his chest. All right, and and so the CIA is is he, he exposed them. He wrote a book called In Search of Enemies. I suggest you read it. Right, and it, and and you, so that as you mentioned this week, you, you started talking about the intercept and the the business model of the United States is constant war constant war right and and you know all these other you know, the race and and the environment and all that stuff is really a sideshow uh, uh right now because uh, you know we've got an election coming up right and and you know i noticed that that you know before uh in america you know people were rightly suspicious of the cia and the fbi and federal prosecutors up until donald trump is in, was inaugurated at that moment, all suspicion against, you know, the FBI and the CIA, everybody was like, get, you know, yeah, get Trump, right? So, so look, this fall, when, when it's time to vote, just ask yourself, what, what, what was the price of, in human lives of having Donald Trump as president versus the price in human lives of having Joe Biden as president. Yeah, right? guess what? Uh, let, Joe, let me, let, Joe, I want to interrupt you, not because, just because I'm running out of time. I, 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 but you know what? You, you made a comment where you said this isn't the best format to have long conversations. The interesting thing about it is that the, the, the platform that I have gives people that, both on the, my, this show, my 3 o'clock show, and on my blogs where you can have commentary. So there's a lot of place to have, places to have this commentary in, in what we're trying to do here. When it comes to body count, We'll talk about that another day because the good thing about having two people who actually have been presidents is that you can honestly and objectively compare numbers. And we'll go through that another time. I can't go through that with you right now, but I got to get to Paul. So, uh, look, actually, I got it. Yeah, I got to get to Paul and then I'll, we'll come back. But thank you, Joe, for calling in, my brother. Hey, listen, it's all about the body count, right? And and under Biden, it had the body count has been a disaster with all these new wars that have sprung we'll talk up. About, we'll talk about that. I mean, you're, you're right about the war is part, but we'll talk about body count. So thank you, my brother. Let's go to uh, Paul. Come on in, Paul. Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to, um, my comment with Mr. Walsh, um, he are you there hello yes I'm, I'm i'm listening sir okay thank you um well mr walsh um he he went into detail on the manifestation of some things that he didn't allude to and so how did we get to this place okay um you know the Republican Party is owned by the corporate superstructure and the billionaires. Okay, two thousand media outlets speaking out right wing uh, craziness. That's why they don't listen to any alternative um, views. Um, uh, so called liberal media uh, has been pretty much wiped off uh, the map. You got to really search and find it. But in flowable country, the Midwest. And uh, rural America, they're getting blasted for the past, you know, how many years, okay, with this right-wing propaganda. It all feeds the divisions that we have in America, which what makes America great is diversity. And so they've been freaked out to believe 
that what would make America great is segregation and division. And I wish you would one day, you know, patch in Tom Hartman or patch in, you know, someone that can give us insight. How do we get to this place? Why democracy is at risk? And moving forward, how can uh, we Paul, support? Yes, sir. Uh, you're absolutely right. And by the way, Tom's a friend and I've had him on several times and he has a book, uh, a, a book that just details exactly what you just said there. Maybe we'll bring him on again before this cycle is over so that we can actually go over that. You're absolutely right that the genesis is uh, the corporate state and how they control the not only the media, but many other factors. And I don't want to just throw it into the hands of Republicans as being corporate owned. There is a sect within the Democratic Party has factions. And there is a faction within the Democratic Party as well that is corporate owned. And we have the progressives that are constantly pulling to put things in the right direction. So I just want to make sure and add that because in it, being intellectually honest that we try to do here, including what the stuff that you said, we have to make sure and lay the blame on the neoliberalism, not only on the Republican side, but neoliberalism on the Democratic side. Well, Paul, give do me you a think they should be called you think they should be called out identified so that people can if they happen to be democrats that maybe get voted in all the time so that they yes. if they're called out and identified so yes. that we can vote against them yes or you know, i agree with you you're absolutely right sir I'm but let me take you deeper and on the democratic side so that and we need to get some muscle it seems like the party doesn't have any muscle it's you know got good ideas and want to preserve democracy but we can't get any muscle behind uh, that concept, that idea, that uh, imperative. Yes, I, I agree with you, Paul. And that's why primaries are very important, specifically uh, Democratic primaries. It, you have to participate to get the right Democrats elected that are uh, that you feel are more progressive. But Paul, I got, I'm filling up someone. I have to restrict everybody to about 30, 45 seconds now. So thank you so kindly, Paul. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Brian. Come on in, Brian. You got forty five seconds. Okay. <clears throat> well, first off, what happened to Jack? Is he okay? Yeah, Jack's uh, yes. fine. Okay. Thanks for asking, uh, Brian. We're learning. Yeah, we're learning more and more about Biden when he goes off strip, uh, off teleprompter every single week. I mean, if you're going to have to die in combat, the way to go is to be eaten by cannibals. <laughs> what, uh, Brian? I, uh, Brian, I hear you. I gotta go, yeah. Brian. <laughs> Brian, yeah, let me go. To... You have Tom Hartman on. I want to. I want to talk to Tom Hartman. All right, I'll, I'll I'll make sure to put you through when that happens. Let's go to Peter. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Peter, come on in. You got about thirty seconds. Thank you so much. So, good. um, uplift Harris. It was blocked by a, a judge here. So. You know, in other words, Ken Paxton was trying to block uh, just the people who need the most help from getting some help, $500. So that looks like it's kind of proceed. And, and then just thank you so much for the interview. And, um, of course, we all need to work to defeat Donald Trump this fall. And I just wish you could do something like that with Dan Crenshaw, because, as you know, he works against the people in our community, uh, even the people who work in power plants. Peter, in our neighborhood that's your field. 30 seconds. Thank you, brother. We're Peter, got to go to bring everybody in. I can't wait to hear more about that. Thank you, brother. That's Peace. In our neighborhood, District 2. Thank you. Peter, uh, let's go to Peter, Augie. Come on that. in, Augie. 30 seconds. Uh, well, you are a great platform. Uh, you're doing what the Bible says. You're planting seeds. Sometimes it, it lands on hard, rocky ground and nothing happens, but then it lands on fertile ground and, and it's open to it. And then you have some great pop up, and that's what you do. And as far as body count, there was a big body count under Trump, under COVID. A lot when he told them to take that veterinary medicine, take something else, and don't take the vaccine, a lot of people died because of Trump. And the last word that some of those people dying was, it's real. And these were Trump voters saying that, hey, uh, if people take the vaccine, and that was their last words before they died. So, yeah, Trump had a body count, an actual body count. And but that's anyway, what I said. Augie, that's why I said we can comp we have the hard data. We had two presidents. We can compare the records. 
And you are so right uh, that we have a lot of work to do. Anything uh, real quick, because I got to jump to Howard. Well, uh, thanks to Howard for what he's doing and you too. Uh, thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you, brother. Have a good one, Augie. Uh, Howard, I know you had something yes, important sir. to tell us. Talk to me. I did. I wanted to talk about Joe Walsh's interview. And one of the points that he brought up was that uh, the folks are, you know, they're looking back and saying, we promise you 1954. Well, if you look at our society uh, during the late 70s and early 80s, we were finally looking back at the 50s. I mean, poodle skirts came back, you know, fins on cars came back, uh, the oldies stations came back. And then later on in the 90s, we were looking back at the 60s going, oh, what a great era that was. And, you know, all the music came back from the 60s and stuff. So we've got this halo look about our past. And that's what they're promising us again. They're saying, oh, well, let's bring back 1954 when the factory was just down the street. But folks, you got to come into the 21st century. Things have changed. And deregulation has changed a lot of that stuff, too. They sent jobs overseas. That's what people are talking about, the disenfranchised middle-income folks. That's who they're appealing to. And that's a, that's a pretty large majority. So because most of us are middle-income folks. I mean, upper middle income, middle income, lower middle income. And I won't I won't say class because we don't have a class system. But if you look back, they're promising you something that doesn't exist. So be very aware that they're promising you things that do not exist and things they cannot deliver on. And they're playing on that halo effect of our past being so glorious. What they don't bring back is polio in the 50s. Killed many people, you know, and they, they don't bring back the Vietnam War of the 60s. They only bring the fact that, oh, yes, it was so great back then. Everything was so fine. We could say Merry Christmas, et cetera. But that kind of world does not exist today, and it never did. You know, they make America great again. Okay, well, for who? Corporations? You bet. That's what they're doing. So be aware of what they're promising you. That's all I got to say. Folks, thank you very much for that insightful word, Howard. We have great callers, great listeners. Love you guys. I mean, this is what it's all about. Let's keep talking. Let's keep making the change that we need to know. Please go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. Uh, every morning it goes out at 5 o'clock with the topics and what we forget to cover or didn't cover. You'll find it in the newsletter, both the old and the new. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. You're listening to the American Democracy Minute, keeping your government by and for the people. Maine became the seventh.